Hey y'all, how everybody doing? Hope everybody doing okay. I want to bring you another um, situation, accuser, uh, a songwriter, longtime friend of Diddy. Uh, she's going to speak out. Um, I, it's, I'm going to say allegations until it's proved, you know, that he, that this, Diddy did all of this, okay? So let's listen to Red. I don't think people understand what it's like to be traumatized by somebody famous and rich because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo, and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness verbal abuse on more than one occasion, one of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke, where Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. So he had her back into the corner, and he was like cussing her out with his hand in his, fit in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the like living room area, and she's there, and he was like emotional singing. There you are, and I just was like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember like I don't know if you know his what his voice sounds like, but like. I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember like looking in his eyes and I said to him, what did y'all do? Cause I could see that she was like really sedated. That was the first time I ever seen her like high before. And then he says, tell your girl, Donald Trump was upset. And we were like, well, I mean, he's saying this to me and I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset. Like, you know, I guess that she, didn't want to do with him whatever she whatever he wanted i don't know i don't feel like i could advocate for myself in that moment like i realized like oh this guy is dangerous red says it was only a few months ago that cassie told her what was really going on that night in 2015 that it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak off against her will Word. what did cassie tell you about these freak offs you know that he would hire these like sex workers and like they would have you know sex with her or whatever and he would watch and tell them what to do in her lawsuit cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak offs throughout her relationship with diddy red learning recently one horrific detail from cassie she told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music go through any um plans any of that was when she had a freak off. So all of our music, all my work, to find out that like I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to rape my friend to, like is just disgusting. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. I remember one time her telling me that I think it might have been the perfect match that that movie that she was in and she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes. I do. Why? I mean, look at his rap sheet. An attorney for Cassie declined to comment. Diddy's attorney did not respond. In 2015, Diddy was arrested on three counts of assault with a deadly weapon and other charges for allegedly beating up his son's football coach. Prosecutors declined to file felony charges related to that arrest. 24 hours after Cassie filed her lawsuit, she and Diddy announced that they had reached an undisclosed settlement. Combs released a statement saying, we have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. His lawyer adding that the settlement was, quote, in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I mean, I just felt like it's PR. <laughs> he settled because he doesn't want to go to court. 
Diddy's music career spans three decades, including three Grammy Awards and the creation of Bad Boy Records, representing artists from Mary J. Blige to the late notorious B.I.G. In September, he was awarded MTV's Global Icon Award. But since the allegations surfaced, Hulu scrapped a reality series about his family, and the Recording Academy said they are considering to rescind his invite to this year's Grammys. You know, I think a lot of people, especially in, in, in the black community, are, you know, I've seen the narrative of, like, you know, they just trying to take a black man down. And it's just like, that's not what this is about. Mm -mm. That's not what this is about. This exactly. is about accountability and and um, a reckoning. Like, that's just the bottom line. As for what justice looks like, I think justice looks like Diddy being behind bars. I also think that justice looks like everybody getting retribution for all of the things. The amount of therapy, like I just said, all of my, all of the moments, the time, like these are our careers. And this is a uh, P. Diddy former dancer, Tanika Ray. Um, she experienced a whole lot. Uh, he, she's a former dancer, or like I said, uh, Sean Diddy and it's a lot of story that she said she said she's not a surprise what's going on with P Diddy. Let's hear a little bit of what she has to say. Mine is horrific and only five people know it, and I probably will never tell it. And mind you, I've been interviewed him many times, but it just is so traumatizing that women just want to live every day and feel safe. And when we revisit and revisit, we live in a state of victimhood. And nobody wants to live there. So for those who are like, why didn't you say something then? Because we just want to live. something to say is it against the law for Dita to be the way he is I mean if he like me uh, if he the way he is 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 it a problem you know I did it, that's all I'm saying is it is something against him liking and hugging men I don't see nothing if they grown and they decide to do this y'all I don't see nothing wrong with it you know Maybe I'm looking at something else. I don't know. Rolling his eyes, he's, he's hiding the mother, and he, when he when he put his head down, it's one of them white boys sucking on him. Oh. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Then you got these guys who, they go into these Turkish houses. Once you get to that door, you don't go back in there. But you know what they do in them Turkish houses. Well, you can assume what. He really a fun boy. Listen, I never seen him in the act with another man alone. Mm. Now he's that type of dude. He'll take his girl, his girl, his baby mama with you and your girlfriend and your man's in them, and they'll go out and they do all kind of freaky shit with each other and together. You know what I'm saying? The only fun boy shit that I ever seen him do. We was in one of those um, exotic shops. Yo, I'm going to turn this shit out. Because this shit was funny. We was in Atlanta. We go to those exotic shops where you get all kind of, like, they buy oils, dildos, or... Uh, um, Spooky! Yeah, you know what I'm saying? All kind of, all kind of shit. So they would just give him a brown paper bag. And they wouldn't even... He couldn't. He never put his shit out on the on the you know on the counter. on the counter when we get ready to take it out. He would always just give a man a, a wad of money. So they just thought it was cool. So they'll give him a brown bag. He'll go through that. So one day I was walking down the aisle with him. 
And so then he just stopped and he just started picking this shit up off the aisle. And he was getting them, just, you know, he, he, he went up there like several times just getting shit down. And so then I I I I I, I pinned in on what he was, you know, where he was getting it from. And because I was just staying a couple of feet behind him. So when I went by, I looked up, I said, yo. And I seen the shit up there and it said butt plugs. And I said, yo, my man, what'd you get this shit for? And the nigga said, yo, on everything I love, yeah, man, I he said, yo, Rick, he said, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? <laughs> this Usher, y'all. New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending you New over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. Was, so nobody tried to, you know, some woman did. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls. There, Lil' Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jody your parents C, were Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. Yeah. I actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, and, what kind, and do you have money? No, no, no just, just don't get close to the bed. Don't get close to the bed, but it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man. Man, you, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it, you did. No, 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 I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting in the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna, if we can, just let's let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not. I don't want my shot to even, was like, I don't want it to come close to the bed, at all. I, I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like that's how. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know? All right, y'all, this is Diddy, uh, shirtless in Miami. You know, he's still living. He's still having a good time, y'all. And I don't know if something's going to happen here. You know, some of the allegation is some of it's uh, fake. I don't know. But I don't know, understand why would they want to fake now. Uh, is spotted out in uh about near his home in Miami now. He's in his home in Miami. Living his life, y'all. Living it like he been doing. Yeah, I I I some some things that I don't understand, and I guess it's not for me to understand, it's for you all to understand. And uh it's like uh if it under eight kids, I can understand. Yes, he needs to be charged. That if it's his, his private life situation, I think people need to leave him alone. You know, at the time, and y'all have to understand, a lot of these young people right here that suing him was young, younger at the time and at the moment when this happened to them. And it's okay when they speak up; they can speak up now if they want to. Now he a billionaire. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Y'all like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.